Hello everyone. So I've been working on a bit of a wiring project for my Evinrude outboard. Technically this will work for probably most outboards and most engines in general, as kind of the, the basic principles are the same, but the wire colors and things like that may be different. Now uh, I made this board because I wanted something with which I could test all functions of the motor without needing a controller or anything like that. I could have any gauges, essentially anything I wanted to throw onto this board and have it tested with the motor. As you can see here is the Evinrude controllers. This, uh, I mean the controller plugs, they plug directly into the motor and currently almost everything here is functioning. So the gauges, the power, the starting, the trim, all that stuff. Also what I did, I added these kind of connector ends to each of the wires so I could kind of hotwire anything I wanted to the controller board. So as you can see right now, the Evinrude controller is not plugged in, but I do have the solenoid and the battery and everything hooked up directly to the board. This way I could test things without being near the motor or I could plug directly into the motor and test everything like that as well. So here I have the solenoid and just uh, to explain, I'm gonna make a bit of a video series because th there's kind of a lot to explain here. And, and the, first, the first video, I really just wanted to show what happens when you turn the key. So that initial motion when you just turn the key once and then what happens when you give it that twist to actually start up the motor. So what happens when, when you do this function and I mean, how to test it and what's going on. And um, in later videos, I'll kind of go over every wire, how everything works, explain how to hook up each gauge and test it. Um, so I guess let's start out. Here I have the solenoid. Right here I have the positive, which connects to the battery, and the negative. And this right here is the starter wire. So that goes, it's connected to the yellow with red stripe wire. This is the ignition key. So when you turn the key and you expect to hear the motor cranking, this is the ignition key. This, this red wire here is just connected straight up to the solenoid, so it's not the ignition key, it's just the key that provides power to this entire system. Now the system power is protected by a 20 amp fuse. In the original video I didn't include this, so things have moved around a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure I explained this. So the standard fuse you get at an auto repair parts store. Um, my other motor actually has one of those tube fuses. I don't think it really matters what fuse it is as long as it matches correctly. And for this motor, it is a 20 amp fuse. Now, I just want to explain how it's wired and how it's connected. It's, it's pretty basic. Now, as the power to the motor is connected here to the solenoid, this cable here that is uh, red with a purple stripe always has power. Now, it goes through this 20 amp fuse here and then it is split into two. So it has two ends that come off. One end goes directly to the controller. So anything that is powered through the controller goes through the fuse. And the second end of it runs directly to the engine patch panel. Now, this protects the circuit. So if there's anything kind of crazy going on in your motor, any kind of shock, it will protect your main devices and make sure nothing is fried. Ooh. I'm just gonna disconnect the power here. So as you can see, there is another red wire here. Now this red wire, which actually is cut off at the moment, it also runs to the solenoid, but it is not protected by the fuse. For example, the trim motor is connected directly to the solenoid here, and it does not go through the fuse. But the button for the trim is connected to this cable here, which does go through the fuse and kind of protects the electronics. Um, so I just wanted to explain the distinction that this fuse is important. I don't currently have it connected as this is kind of a test environment and I'm I'm going to have a connect in the future, but this protects your entire system from getting fried. And uh, for example, some things, for example, that connect to the direct power source, like I said, is the trim motor. Also the regulator here, it connects directly here. So as the motor outputs power, it goes, connects directly to here and it goes right to the battery. So if there's any kind of spike, it won't go through the main system or the controller. It's kind of separated. Now I even have a, so a wiring diagram here, as you can see. So here's exactly what I'm talking about. The power connects to the solenoid, runs to the fuse, from which the cable runs and then it splits into two, one going back to the controller and one running here, it connects to the panel and 
runs to the switch for the trim up and down. And here you can see the regulator that is right over there. This, the red wire from this connects to the other cable which runs to the sol same location on the solenoid but it is not protected by a fuse. I just want to explain very simply how this part is wired. It's, uh, it's fairly important, but it's easy, you know, it's easy to set up and just easy to check. Just protects your motor from any kind of electrical damage. Actually, I even have two diagrams here, as you can see. One is for an older version. This actually does not have any trim, and this is for the other one for a slightly newer one. Now, the purple wire is the accessory wire. This is what provides electricity to things like gauges and overall devices on the board. So when you turn the key once, this initiates the motor system. Now the motor will not turn over, you won't hear the motor. In fact, you will hear a beep from the speaker. So you turn the key and you hear a beep. And actually, in fact, uh, this is a slightly older version of the speaker and it does not have that beep function when you turn the key. So it will beep as a warning for overheating or things like that. Here's the temperature sensor but it will not beep at the start. But uh, in almost all other cases, it should beep. So just to just let you know. Now, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hook up the battery. So let's connect the battery in. At the moment, I have the battery gauge. It's a little, it's not the best battery gauge because it's, it's going up to 32 volts and this is only a 12 volt battery. So the gauge won't move much, but it moves just a little bit, just to, so I can tell that there is power. Now, as you can see, I have the voltage gauge, it's currently hooked up to the primary ground and to the accessory wire. I did this because when I turn the key, I want to know the system is engaged. So at the moment, if I connect the battery, the battery gauge will not move because this is connected to the accessory, so essentially the power of the system. And since the key is currently off, nothing will be displayed. All right, so I'm gonna connect the battery here. And now I'll turn the key and you will see this arrow move just a little bit. There it goes. You can see it move just a little bit. So it's, it's not going to move a lot just because the battery is lower voltage than this gauge, but I can tell that it's on. In fact, I also hooked up the purple wire at the moment, is the accessory wire, to this gauge. So you can see the light turns on on the gauge. So I don't know if you can tell over there, right in that little corner. It's kind of bright, so it's hard to tell, but this gauge powers on. Also, you can see the gauge itself moves a little bit, so what will happen is a lot of the gauges will, they'll kind of just just wiggle a little bit. This is, this is only because the power goes through the system and they kind of, you can just tell that the power the system is powered on. Now, so the system is powered on. Like I said, you'd probably hear a beep, knowing that your system is, everything's correct. Now, so there's three wires that are currently working. So we got the primary positive, the main ground, and the only other thing that's on is purple. The purple, as I said, the accessory wire. So right now, this is what happens when you turn the key. Everything's primed, ready to go. And this is pretty much the same on many other motors. This is how the system is ready to start. Now, here, the next step is when you turn the key and the solenoid clicks. So so you hear that? That's the solenoid. So that is this wire right here, which is connected to the yellow and orange strip. When I turn that key, it engages this wire and it's connected to the solenoid connector, which engages the solenoid. It and if the starter motor was connected to the solenoid right now, which as you can see, this cable, this red cable imitates what's coming from the battery as if it was connected to the, to the motor. And this other one, runs to the starter. And normally the ground would run to the actual motor itself. So the starter motor is grounded to the frame of the motor and it just connects with this one positive coming from the other side of the solenoid. So when you hear this click, power is provided to this black wire and the starter motor would crank. Now, if you didn't hear this click, that means your solenoid is probably bad and uh, you know the motor is not gonna start. What you could do is bypass the solenoid by just connecting the two wires briefly and, and you should hear the starter start. Now, obviously if that doesn't happen, your starter might be bad, but I mean, most likely you're not gonna have both, both items that aren't working. Now, just to give that brief overview, I'm gonna go into detail of every single wire, how to hook up the gauges, 
what happens. But this is how it functions. Also, one, one other thing, there is the neutral safety switch. Now, you can pretty much attach anything you want, but as you can see, the yellow with, with a red stripe ignition wire, it goes through this little switch here. So I'm gonna turn off the power briefly. So I'll shock myself or anything like that. Maybe a little difficult to see, but this is the neutral safety switch. I just have it zip tied shut because normally when it's in neutral position, the switch is pressed down and this will allow that clicking sound when you turn the key. Now, if this switch isn't pressed, it will not allow the wire power to go through this wire and there will be no clicking or anything else. So if you don't hear the clicking, it might not just be your solenoid, but it could be your neutral safety switch or essentially any other safety feature that passes through the ignition wire. I mean, you could pretty much attach anything to this, but that's how it functions. Your motor is in neutral, you turn the key and it should work. But if it's not in neutral, you don't want to break it, so the, the crank won't start. Now this is just a very brief overview. Um, stay tuned for video two, which will go a bit more in depth. But I just want to explain the very basics of what happens when you turn the key, how the motor starts, and kind of what to look for.